Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth and welcome to episode 15 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode, I'll explain how to calculate the number of steps that are required by the stepper motor to move an axis of one machine unit when using a rack and pinion. I'm a home hobbyist that would like to share my experience using Linux CNC, formerly known as EMC2, as a controller and CNC controlled machines for the home shop. It is my hope that as I release these videos over time that other home hobbyists can use the information to make their own CNC controlled machines. With some luck, maybe these videos remove some of the mystery behind the Linux CNC controller and perhaps help some avoid the issues that I encountered while learning to use it. With that out of the way, let's get started. In video number 13, titled Linear Motion, I talked a little bit about rack and pinion. I explained that a rack and a pinion are essentially two gears, a straight gear called a rack and a smaller gear that rolls along the rack called a pinion. In the linear system of a rack and pinion, the rack is generally fixed to the machine and the pinion made to roll along it. That is, one revolution of the pinion on the rack will move the axis some amount depending on the circumference of the pinion. I remind you of this because there's an important conceptual link you should make. This distance can be thought of as the lead of the pinion, just like the lead of a screw. For example, let's pretend that one revolution of the pinion along the rack moves the axis one inch. This, in a way, could be seen as a lead screw with a lead of one inch. Think about that for a minute and let it sink in. It has nothing to do with the calculations that we're about to do, but it is an important concept that we need to understand when setting up a machine using the StepConf wizard. The StepConf wizard was created around a lead screw and not the rack and pinion, so we have to have a way to express the specifics of the rack and pinion to a lead screw. I'll cover this again when I cover the StepConf wizard. Most rack and pinions that are available to the home hobbyists will be made with gears of involute, form, and straight teeth called spur gears. Gears of this type are made in both imperial and metric sizes. The imperial size gears are measured in diametral pitch and the metric gears are measured in module, but in reality they measure the same thing. The module or diametral pitch of a gear is equal to the number of teeth per unit of pitch diameter. That sounds pretty simple, but what is a pitch diameter? For an explanation, look at the graphic on the screen. Here you see two gears that are meshed together. These gears make contact somewhere in the middle of the tooth. If you were to draw a circle using the center of the gear as the origin and this point of contact between the teeth as the radius, you will draw what is known as the pitch circle of the gear you can see the pitch circles labeled for both gears in the drawing. The pitch diameter I referred to above is the diameter of the circle. Now that we have an understanding of what the pitch diameter is, let's get back to diametral pitch and module discussion. In the imperial system of measurement, the base unit is the inch, so a gear's pitch diameter would be measured in inches. Therefore, diametral pitch measures the number of teeth per inch of pitch diameter. So, for example, if we had a gear that had a pitch of 2 inches and had 40 teeth, we can calculate the diametral pitch by dividing the number of teeth by the pitch diameter. In this case, the diametral pitch would be 40 divided by 2, which equals 20. The gear would have a diametral pitch of 20. Likewise, the metric system unit of measure is the millimeter and the module would be the number of teeth per millimeter of pitch diameter. If we had a gear with a pitch diameter of 48 millimeters and had 60 teeth, we can calculate the module of the gear by dividing the number of teeth, which is 60, by the pitch diameter of 48, giving us 1.25. The module of the gear would be 1.25. Knowing this allows us to easily convert diametral pitch to module and vice versa by converting the pitch diameter to whatever unit we need and then perform our calculations of, on that unit of measure. If we are buying a new rack and pinion, we are assured to know what the specifications are from the company that we're buying it from. 
But, on the other hand, if we're repurposing a rack and a pinion we acquired from another piece of equipment, we have to find a way of determining what size it is. To do this, we need to know the pitch diameter of the pinion gear. The problem is that the pitch circle about the pitch diameter is measured is imaginary and lies somewhere in the middle of the depth of the gear tooth. This pitch diameter is important to us. Why? because without it we have no clue how far the pinion travels along the rack in one revolution. The pitch circle cannot be seen. So how do we measure it? In order to find the pitch diameter of a gear, we have to travel the path of the known to the unknown. So take our gear. What can we find out about it? Well, we can measure the outside diameter and we can count the number of the teeth that it has. That's about all we can say about it, but as fortune would have it, that's enough information to get started. There are formulas that we can bend to our will to find the missing information. Rather than going over a long list of gear related formulas, I'll only cover those that are useful to our needs. Suppose that we have a pinion gear that measures 1.625 inches in diameter and has 24 teeth. What can we find out? Well, Fortunate for us, there's a formula to calculate the diametral pitch of a gear when the number of teeth and the outside diameter of the gear is known. I have placed that on the screen and we see that the diametral pitch is equal to the sum of the number of teeth on the gear plus 2 divided by the outside diameter in inches. Using the sample pinion values from above plugged into the formula, we get dp equals the sum of 24 plus 2 divided by 1.625. When we work this out, we find that the diametral pitch is equal to 16. So, now we know three pieces of information about the gear. Next, we can use the formula to find the pitch diameter of the gear. This formula is on the screen and you can see that the pitch diameter is equal to the number of teeth in the gear divided by the diametral pitch. So using the numbers for our gear in the formula, we get 24 divided by 16. That gives a pitch diameter of 1 and 1 half inches. Having the pitch diameter then allows us to find the circumference of the pitch circle and carry on with the rest of our business. Now, let's take a look at the problem from a metric point of view. In this example, we have a gear with 20 teeth and its diameter measures 27.5 millimeters. We will see if there are any formulas that will help us solve the problem of finding the pitch diameter. Similar to diametral pitch formula, there's a formula to calculate the module of a gear when you know the number of teeth and the outside diameter. I've placed that on the screen and we see that the module is equal to the outside diameter in millimeters divided by the sum of the number of teeth on the gear plus 2. Using the sample pinion values from above plugged into the formula, we get m equals 27.5 divided by the sum of 20 plus 2. When we work this out, we find that the module of the gear is equal to 1.25. Just like before, we now know three pieces of information about the gear. Next, we can use a formula to find the pitch diameter of the gear. This formula is on the screen and you see that the pitch diameter is equal to the number of the teeth on the gear multiplied by the module of the gear. So using the numbers for our gear in the formula we get 20 times 1.25. That gives us a pitch diameter of 25 millimeters. Having found the pitch diameter we can calculate the circumference of the pitch circle. So far, so good. But what if we don't know if the gear was imperial or metric? If we had a gear of unknown origin and was trying to figure out if it was metric or imperial, the solution is simple, well, or at least seems to be. Calculate either the diametral pitch of the gear or calculate the module. Then, reference a table of diametral pitch to module equivalents and compare our calculated results to the values listed. If you calculate either diametral pitch or module and would like to convert to the other, there are a couple of simple formulas you can use. I've put these on the screen for you. The first will allow you to convert a module to a diametral pitch. To convert to module, simply divide the constant 25.4 by the diametral pitch. Likewise, to convert to a module to a diametral pitch, divide the constant 25.4 by the module. 
A little while ago, I said figuring out if a gear was metric or imperial was simple, or at least it seems to be. In the above examples, we were dealing in theory, but life has a way of throwing obstacles in our way. The diameters of the previous two gears were ideal values. In the real world, mass production is ruled by tolerances, meaning that we will rarely find ideal measurements, and if they were exact, they would only be exact at certain temperatures. But I digress. It is common to find that gears are made a few thousandths smaller in diameter than what the formulas dictate. When you measure these gears and apply the formulas, you will discover that the numbers are slightly off. If you know that you're working with a known imperial or metric gear, looking at the chart of standard gear sizes, you'll know at a glance what size and diametral pitch or module that you have. Now, if we had a gear of unknown origin that could be either metric or imperial, we have a bit of a problem. These small variances can make it difficult to find out which one we have. Here's my suggested solution to the problem. Work out both diametral pitch and the module of the unknown gear. Consult a chart of diametral pitch to module conversions and look to see what's the closest fit that that gear will go with. The closer the gear was made to tolerance, the closest the match to one or the other will be. If the manufacturer's uh, tolerances were loose, uh, then it really becomes a crapshoot. Just pick one and hope for the best. One final note about this topic before we move on. Don't fret if you can't figure out what the gear is. Uh, like the lead screw, uh, you'll want to think this is a starting point. Once you have your machine running, you'll want to tweak the settings to correct the tolerances and other things. This is why I'm taking the time to show you how to calculate the steps per machining unit to begin with. So let's move on before my brain turns to jello with all that theory. For these exercises, we're going to assume that the stepper motor that we're using will have 200 steps per revolution, and that the stepper driver will be set to half-stepping, meaning that we will require two steps to make one step on the motor. Using this means that for one revolution of the motor, we'll require 400 steps, 200 motor steps times two micro steps to make one revolution. These settings are only for the exercises that follow. You may have a motor with more or less steps per revolution, or you may be using a different microstep setting on your driver. You'll need to use your values in your calculations. In our first example, we will imagine that our axis of interest has a rack and pinion. The pinion is attached directly to the stepper motor and is engaged to the rack. The rack and pinion is 20 diametral pitch, and the pinion gear has 20 teeth. The first thing that we need to do is to calculate the pitch circle diameter from the known information. This can be done with the formula pitch diameter equals the number of teeth in the pinion divided by the diametral pitch of the gear. I have the formula on the screen in dark green. So the pitch diameter equals 20 teeth divided by a diametral pitch of 20, which equals 1 inch. Now that we know the diameter of the pitch circle, we can calculate its circumference by multiplying the diameter by pi. The resulting diameter is 3.14159 inches. Now, we know the distance the pinion will travel along the rack in one revolution. Since we know that the pinion is directly coupled to the stepper motor, we also know that when the stepper motor makes one revolution, so will the pinion. To calculate the steps per inch, we will take the steps per revolution of the motor times the microstepping and divide it by the circumference of the pitch circle. Recall that I stated for these examples the stepper motor makes 200 steps per revolution and the driver is set to half stepping. So our formula becomes 200 times 2 divided by 3.14159, which equals 127.324 steps per inch. To determine the steps per millimeter, we can take the steps per inch and divide by 25.4. So taking 127.324 steps per inch divided by 25.4 gives us 5.013 steps per millimeter. Or if you want to determine the steps per millimeter with a formula, it would be the steps per motor revolution times the micro stepping divided by the pitch circle circumference times 1 divided by 25.4, 1.5 
or in our case 200 times 2 divided by 3.14159 times 1 divided by 25.4 which equals 5.013 steps per millimeter. The same answer is above. Notice the small values we get for steps per inch and steps per millimeter. This is why we use gear reduction and high micro-stepping values for the drivers when using rack and pinion system. With these sorts of values you'll lose much precision on the machine. In this example, let's assume that we have a rack and a pinion that is 1.25 module and the pinion has 20 teeth. Solving this is similar to the one that we just done. First, we calculate the pitch diameter. For modulus gears, to find the pitch diameter, we simply multiply the module by the number of teeth. In this case, 1.25 times 20 gives us a pitch diameter of 25 millimeters. And once again, we need to find the circumference of the pitch circle. To do this, we multiply the pitch diameter by pi, giving us 25 times 3.14159, which equals 78.54 millimeters. This will be the distance that the gear travels in one revolution along the rack. Remember, the pinion is attached directly to the stepper motor, so when the motor makes one complete revolution, so will the pinion. To calculate the number of steps required for one millimeter of travel, we'll take the number of steps for the stepper motor and multiply by the micro-stepping value and divide by the pitch circle circumference. So, 200 steps times 2 micro-steps divided by 78.54 millimeters gives us an answer of 5.093 steps per millimeter. If we were looking to get steps per inch, we can easily convert this by multiplying the steps per millimeter by 25.4 to give us steps per inch. So, 5.093 times 25.4 equals 129.362 steps per inch. If, on the other hand, you wanted to use your formula to calculate it, it would be the steps for the motor times the micro-stepping value times 25.4 divided by the pitch circle circumference. Doing this gives us 200 times 2 times 25.4 divided by 78.54. This calculates to 129.361 steps per inch. Essentially the same answer as above. In this example, we imagine that we have a gear reduction set up with a 20 tooth pinion pulley on the stepper motor and a 40 tooth pulley that is compounded to the pinion which has 20 teeth. This is a metric rack and pinion with a module of 1. This problem is similar to our previous examples with the exception that we have a gear reduction. We start with the gear reduction and it is expressed as a fraction of driven divided by driver. Since the stepper motor is driving the system, we know that the 20 tooth pulley is the driver and the remaining pulley is the driven. This gives us a reduction of 40 divided by 20, which reduces to 2. The rest of the calculations are the same as above. We need to find the pitch circle diameter. Recall this is a module times the number of teeth in the pinion. In this case, 1 times 20 or 20 millimeters. Next we find the circumference of the pitch circle by multiplying the pitch diameter by pi giving us 62.83 millimeters. Finally, to find the steps per millimeter we multiply the gear ratio by the steps for the stepper motor times the micro stepping and finally dividing by the pitch circle circumference. In whole the formula is driven divided by driver times motor steps times micro-stepping divided by the pitch circle circumference. Plugging our numbers we get 40 divided by 20 times 200 times 2 divided by 62.83 which calculates to 12.733 steps per millimeter. If we need steps per inch this can be converted by multiplying the steps per millimeter by 25.4. So 12.733 times 25.4 gives us 323.418 steps per inch. If you wanted to use just a formula to calculate steps per inch, it would be driven divided by driver times the stepper steps times micro steps times 25.4 divided by the pitch circle diameter. 
using our numbers that would be 40 divided by 20 times 200 times 2 times 25.4 divided by 62.83 giving us a value of 323.412 steps per inch very close to the answer above the discrepancies are due to rounding in this example we imagine that we have a gear reduction set up with a 20 tooth pinion pulley on the stepper motor and a 50 tooth pulley that is compounded on the pinion gear of the rack and pinion the pinion has 20 teeth and has a diametral pitch of 24 the solution to this example starts just like the previous example we start with the gear reduction Again, the driver is the geared pulley attached to the stepper motor. In this case, it has 20 teeth, and the driven is the 50 tooth pulley compounded to the pinion. Recall the formula is driven divided by driver times the steps for one complete motor revolution. This gives us 50 divided by 20 times 400, which equals 1000. This is the number of steps required to turn the pinion one revolution. Now, the pinion has 20 teeth and has a diametral pitch of 24. To determine the pitch diameter we divide 20 by 24 to get 0.833 inches. Finally, to get the pitch circle circumference we multiply this by pi. So, 0.833 times 3.14159 equals a circumference of 2.618 inches. Finally, if we take the steps above to make one revolution of the pinion and divide by the pitch circle circumference, we get 1000 divided by 2.618, which gives us 381.971 steps per inch. The formula in whole is driven divided by drivers times the motor steps times the micro steps divided by the pitch circle circumference, or 50 divided by 20 times 200 times 2 divided by 2.618 which gives us 381.971 steps per inch. To convert this to steps per millimeter we take the steps per inch and divide by 25.4. So 381.971 divided by 25.4 equals 15.04 steps per millimeter. This can be calculated directly with the formula driven divided by driver times motor steps per revolution times micro steps divided by the pitch circle circumference times 1 divided by 25.4. Plugging our numbers into the equation gives 50 divided by 20 times 200 times 2 divided by 2.618 times 1 divided by 25.4 resulting in 15.04 steps per millimeter. Okay, enough number crunching for one day. My head's starting to hurt, and yours is either hurting too or it's not far behind. So let's move on. So where to from here? In this video I covered most of the common calculations that you would need for a rack and pinion system with or without a gear reduction. I know that we got into the weeds a little bit with the gear theory, but again, my thinking is that knowing all you can about a system or subject will help alleviate many of the problems you might otherwise encounter. From here I'll be covering the step comp utility. This is the basic stepper motor configuration utility that we use to get a machine initially configured and up and running. While the step comp utility calculates the steps per machine unit for you, it's good to know how to do them yourself when it comes time to tweak the system later. Also, knowing how to calculate these values yourselves gives you a sanity check when you enter values for your machine into the utility. It's worth noting that the steps per machine unit are a value listed in the config file as a number just like we've been calculating. And if you modify your system extensively, you'll find that the step comp utility will not work for you. What I mean by this is that when you make any or many changes, uh, to the config files directly, the step comp will override or remove your customizations, so learning how to calculate the steps per machine unit will eventually help you in the future. Finally, though I didn't mention in this tutorial, you'll want to set the machine unit to your machine to the same as your tooling. For example, if most of your tooling is metric, you'll want to set your machine unit to the millimeter. 
Reasons for this were discussed in the previous tutorial, number 14, titled Computing Steps per Machine Unit for the Lead Screw. As always, thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. CNC is a fun and rewarding addition to the home shop, and if you have friends that are thinking of getting into it, please consider sending them my way. Other than that, have a blessed day.